All right, Jeff. On top of the morning, the rest of you goons and mutants as well. Uh, thick, thick and rancid um, smell of um, smoke. It's acrid um, out there today. Can't seem to escape it. Now, um, here is your 67 showman. Let's check it out. It's normal channel. We have some sticky pots here. The normal channel. Let's try the vibrato channel. Okay. So we'll see what's up. Stand by. I've said it before and it's worth repeating. Um, okay, first of all, <laughs> This is a particularly interesting amp to me um, because of these stamps. Now, these stamps tell you that this was brought back to the actual factory in 1967 for service, and that's what it got. Uh, Tech RI and RG, um, RG over here on the 42nd week of 1967, RI on the 46th week of 1967. That's a... What is that, a four month discrepancy? What is going on? We're gonna find out what they did. So uh, let's move on over and here's the first telltale sign. So take a look at this 5881. And you can see that this is part of the service that was rendered by RG on a 42nd week of 67. He put the service stamp on an actual tube itself. So I, I'm going to just make an assumption that, you know, either he replaced the entire sleeve or he, he replaced one. So uh, let's hope that there's not a, a different power transformer there. Although if this is a truly a 67 and we'll see, um, that shouldn't really matter if it's the first year. So let's take a peek uh, for certain. Um, the factory did stamp the head shell with uh, this particular one. So with, with this particular year rather. Um, let's see what else. And that's it. So I'm gonna work on getting uh, this chassis out of the shell and then we'll just take it from there, you guys. Then here's another look. You can see uh, near the top part of the envelope here, RG4267. All right, so at least from outward appearances, it would appear that uh, the two dudes at the factory were dealing with some tube issues, maybe a bad run. But uh, this little guy here is gonna need a cap job especially over here on the bias board. I, I love, uh, these particular caps hold up so much better than the equivalent Mallory's. These, these are really nice quality caps. I'm reluctant to change these. I'm gonna test them under load, but I rarely see these, rarely. This is a treat. Look at this beautiful wiring, 67, huh? Never sell this amp. This is a treat. This one I will change. Beautiful. All right, and it's the same with the doghouse here. Beautiful General Electric filter caps with the old poopy Mallory's, but they all need to be changed. There's bulging on the anodes there. Um, your iron, your output transformer, and the choker from 66. Your your power transformer is from 67. Pretty cool. Your octal sockets are heavily corroded. I can take care of that. No big deal. All right, gotta clean things up. There's your new power cord. Look at that solder joint. Oh man, I'm really enjoying this Hacko 601 FX. 
Just a beautiful, it, this thing from warm up to touchdown was like two minutes. And literally I had to hold it onto the chassis for a total of what, like six seconds before uh, the, the solder bonded with it. This is ridiculously efficient. It's amazing. But check this out. Your bias filter cap leaky. That would have been bye-bye tubes. Thank you for hanging out again for another episode of Forgotten Gear Restorations. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye.